60 seconds to kick in Champaign, Illinois, and a big opportunity today for the Wisconsin Badgers to keep their hopes alive for a Big Ten championship. Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Five Hour Energy. It's also a big day for the Fighting Illini of Illinois after a 6-0 start, their best start in 60 years. Well, they have taken a turn for the worse, a four-game losing streak they hope to bring to an end with an upset today. I'm Beth Mullins, along with former Oregon head coach and athletic director Mike Bellotti. And uh, Mike, Illinois will be up against it today because of the offensive weapons uh, for Wisconsin coming in with Russell Wilson. Right, it, it starts with Russell Wilson, maybe the best transfer in college football history, but right now, his passing efficiency is off the charts. He's over 200. That would set the record all time if he continues to do so. He's also very selective in what he does because he can survey the field. If he doesn't like what he sees, he's just going to run the football. He does a great job of that. And he's also uh, got a teammate who leads the nation in touchdowns with 27 and has set a new Big Ten record along the way. Yeah, if I had a I'd like to give him the ball a few times. I mean, he's slimmed down this year, down to about 210 pounds, so he's not a big back, but he's a combination of a power back and a speed back. He didn't catch the ball out of the backfield, too. He's got 27 touchdowns already. He is a scoring machine. And you see him already uh, practicing tucking that ball in. Very rarely do they turn it over at Wisconsin. Here's what's at stake in the leaders' division. The most probable scenario, a Wisconsin win today sets up a winner-take-all showdown with Penn State in Madison next Saturday for the leaders' division crown and a berth in the inaugural Big Ten championship game. On the other side, in the Legends division, it is Michigan State's to lose with two games remaining in which they will be the heavy favorites. You know, a lot of people are asking, is Wisconsin going to overlook Illinois today with that big game with Penn State? I don't think so. They've lost two games already. Uh, they didn't finish those games. They talk a lot about that. I think they're ready to go. I think they'll be focused. I think they take the Illini very seriously. Illinois won the toss, and they defer as the kick goes over the head of Kenzel Doe. And that vaunted offense for Wisconsin will take the field first. They come in, they are on pace to set a new school record, averaging 46 points per game, and they are rushing for 250 per game. And Russell Wilson, in his one and only season in Madison, putting up tremendous numbers. Those are pretty, yeah, pretty exceptional numbers. <laughs> Not exactly pedestrian. Those are, those are really, really good. Coming off the win against Minnesota where Wilson was 16 of 17 throwing the ball. Four touchdowns through the air and their first play will be a run with Monty Ball. And into the middle of that defense, Ashante Williams with the tackle. Whenever you prepare for Illinois, you've got to be ready for their defensive ends in particular, two of the best in the conference. No question, Buchanan, Merciless, and Whitney is leading the conference in sacks, tackles for loss, forced fumbles. He's a force to be reckoned with out there on the field. Wisconsin, as they love to do, shifting guys around. They send a tight end, a fullback, and a wide receiver in motion, trying to set up a numbers mismatch, which uh, helps them be so effective offensively. Here's today's impact players brought to you by Marmot, and we'll start with Wisconsin's offense. Russell Wilson, as you can see, the leader in pass efficient. His NFL stock is going up rapidly as he continues to do things this season. Monty Ball, we talked about, he's lost some weight. He's a true impact player in terms of what he does with the ball in his hands, leading more than two touchdowns a game. And Mike Taylor on the other side of the ball, the leading tackler in the Big Ten Conference. On third and two, ball the lone setback. Wilson to the air, and a net tune for first down yardage. We should also note, Mike, the weather conditions very conducive to a running game today. It is chilly, it is windy, and it was raining earlier, so there's some moisture on the field. The wind is gusting from 20 to 30 miles an hour. It's going to make it tough to throw. The wind is going to be a huge factor in this game. Right now, Wisconsin's going against the wind, but that serves their purposes because they can run the ball. Pound and ground, as they call it, is not affected by the wind. Once again, motion from both the tight end and the fullback, and this time it's tuned the wide receiver in motion. Ball. 
They had extra numbers on that right side to block with, and ball with a seven-yard gain. And one of the things that you look at all the time is how can you get numbers to help you, and you have to continually adjust defensive to match numbers, especially when they change strength with those tight ends. Those tight ends and fullbacks are big blocking guys that really affects the call of the defense. Brady Ewing also a good blocker. He does not have a carry as their fullback yet this year. After the loss, or excuse me, after that uh, seven-yard gain, second and three, and ball into the second level and across midfield inside the 45 for a Wisconsin first down. Good block by Travis Frederick and Jacob Pedersen. And that was also great patience by Monty Ball. We talk about how sticky, how Velcro-like these offensive linemen are for Wisconsin. Once they get on you, it's tough to separate. And then Ball has the patience to read those blocks, set them up, and then burst into the open field. At 16 points per game, he has at least two touchdowns per game this year. He will take a breather. James White is now in a tailback after a 19-yard run from Ball. White caught from behind in the backfield by Jonathan Brown, the leading tackler for Illinois. Jonathan Brown adding to his tackles for loss. He's got 14.5. Uh, he just burst through. You can see him coming right there. No stopping him. He goes right, reads that. That's one of the ways to get at this Wisconsin offense is to stop before they get started. We have an injury, and I'll tell you what, I hope it's not an offensive lineman because they've already downed the center. Uh, yeah, Ricky Wagner, their left tackle or weak tackle in this uh, offensive alignment where they play weak and strong. Not all the time, though. They do it just enough to keep you honest. Wagner is their left tackle. They already have a new starter at center today due to the injury to Peter Kahn's Wagner, number 58, hit from behind inadvertently. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Five Hour Energy. Scoreless early in this first quarter, and Wisconsin already with one injury on the offensive line pregame. Now with another one, Ricky Wagner getting checked out, the left tackle, so Rob Havenstein joining Ryan Groy, the center, as newcomers. Russell Wilson. He will give the Monty ball and a good charge right up the middle. The tackle made by Ian Thomas. Illinois also uh, playing down a starter. That is Trulon Henry, who is recovering from surgery after a gunshot wound last weekend in an off-campus incident where he was trying to help out some of his teammates. Henry is out. Tavon Wilson, one of their starting quarterbacks, is actually wearing not only his number, but also his name on the back of the jersey. Trulon Henry's been a leader for this team. He's seen his older guy. He came to rescue some people at a party that were, their new trouble was brewing, and he was trying to be a peacemaker. He got caught start. in the wrong place. Offense, number 67, five-yard penalty. It remains third down. Got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. And when you lose a guy like that, because he was a leader for this team, and in this time when you're not winning, you need those leaders around. Good to see him on the sideline. He will be back okay. It's going to take quite a bit of time, as you said. But they're going to wear a jersey. Somebody's going to wear his jersey for every game. He is actually the older brother of former wide receiver Aurelius Ben, who came back for a day this week uh, to uh, not only pick up his brother, but also say some encouraging words to the Illinois team, trying to end a four-game Losing skid and ball caught in the backfield by Jonathan Brown. That was a great play by Brown. He smelled out that screen, came underneath, and made the tackle. It's really important for Illinois to start fast. All the coaches talked about it. Wanted to get the stop on defense, not get the ball back. Watch for up-tempo. Watch for multiple quarterbacks. Watch for the receivers becoming the ball carrier. And a developing story could be the offensive line and injuries for Wisconsin. Plenty of pressure on that defensive stand from the Illinois Defensive linemen and backers, and the punt from Wisconsin down at the 14-yard line. That's where Illinois will take over after a 41-yard kick 
Here are the impact players brought to you by Marmont uh, for Illinois offensively. Nathan Shieldhouse, one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the conference. His numbers have gone down lately, though, with the lack of a running game. A.J. Jenkins also, numbers have stayed the same, but not explosive plays. People have double teamed him. He's got a breakout today. And on the other side of the ball, Whitney Merciless. Will he stay or will he go as a junior? But he's leading the conference in sacks, tackles for loss, etc. Shieldhouse out of the gun. Jenkins in motion. He will take the handoff and get out close to the 20-yard line. It's really been a tale of two seasons, Mike, for Illinois. The 6-0 start and then the four-game losing skid. And offensively, it has all started with a lack of first-half production. Absolutely. And a lack of rain. They're down 100 yards per game in terms of running the football. They're down 20-some points a game in terms of scoring. And they go hand-in-hand. Shieldhouse in what looks like a busted play. He'll create out of that, diving out to the 29-yard line. As Illinois would love to get its first first-half points since five games ago. Well, and, and they've got involved Shieldhouse. He's still the most explosive playmaker that they have, and it's in running the football as well as throwing it. And, Mike, we're already seeing one of the adjustments for Illinois. They are going up-tempo early as that ball ping-pongs out of bounds and a flag in the secondary looks like potentially pass interference I think they said he may have had contact early but you're right we're they're gonna go up tempo they talked about changing tempo. they're not gonna stand pat when you're not doing well pass interference defense number 44 spot foul results in an automatic first down you've got oh yeah grab the jersey yeah, a little little grab there Borland, a very, very good football player, trailing only his partner, Mike Taylor, in tackles in the conference. We'll get back to the other offensive adjustments in just a second. Shieldhouse, they love those underneath crossing routes. That one incomplete to A.J. Jenkins. One of the things that's happened, too, is when you don't have a great running game, you're forced to pass more often when people know you have to pass. Protection becomes more difficult. Shieldhouse has not been as comfortable in the pocket lately. They have brought Paul Petrino down to the sidelines to infuse some confidence on the sideline and energy for this team. We also are expecting to see Riley O'Toole at quarterback for a couple of series in the first half. Shieldhouse. Jason Ford out across the 40. That'll set up a third and four. Aaron Henry, the tackle in the secondary. And they really need to get Jason Ford on track. He's only averaging 3.8 yards a carry, but they're talking about getting him on the perimeter more. Not a power back, really, although he's pretty good size. He's 235 pounds, but Petrino on the sideline wants to get Ford on the perimeter, feels he could be more effective there. Yeah, their running game has not been as productive this year as it has been in years past under Ron Zook. Where they have often had one of, if not the best, rushing attack in the league. They're sixth right now in the catch for a first down. Let's send it to the studio, Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you very much. At the Dr. Pepper 10 conference update, it takes us to Minnesota and Northwestern. Nobody on the board here. Then Dan Persa, a seven-yard connection to Kane Coulter, seven, nothing Northwestern. Thank you, Wendy. Scoreless here in Champaign, Illinois, Wisconsin. Needing a win to keep their Big Ten championship hopes alive. Spencer Harris getting away from Mike Taylor and shot out of bounds around the Wisconsin 42-yard line. Nice job of throwing on first down. They had been running, trying to keep Wisconsin off balance. The up-tempo NASCAR speed tempo, whatever you want to call it, puts the defense a little bit on their heels. Donovan Young is now in a tailback. He did not have a carry for Illinois in their Michigan loss last week. They come with Borland on the blitz. It's flat off from the completion to Jenkins for a six-yard gain inside the 40-yard line. One of the things that they have stressed the past couple weeks is that the receivers need to make contested catches. Meaning it's easy to make the catches when you're wide open, but you've got to do it when you're being covered. They've done a nice job so far, and Shieldhouse is putting the ball where they can catch it. Some confidence and some momentum early for what has been an unproductive Illinois offense, but this up-tempo has certainly changed things for them on their first possession today. 
And as I say that, uh, two of the uh, least penalized teams in the league already have a, a couple on the carpet here early. Bolster, Confusion. offense, number 52, five-yard penalty. It remains second down. Confusion from the get-go on that play. Part of it was, where do I line up? Sometimes you have personnel groups where there are multiple receivers, multiple tight ends, and you all have to figure out, where do I line up in a hurried man? It's also an offensive line that has two new starters from a week ago, Alex Hill and Simon Svianovic replacing injured starters out there right now. Ford trying to get to the edge to about the 37-yard line. Jason Ford, the ball carrier. Uh, Fenelis on the stop. It's, it's an Illinois team that probably hasn't been concerned too much about off-field stuff, but there's been a lot of talk locally, Mike, about Ron Zook's future and, and how this would help him to get an upset win today. Oh, no question. I mean, that would help him, but I don't I don't think players worry about that. Players don't like the fact that, to lose. They yeah. don't like to be 0-4 in the last four games. They want to get a win. I, I, they care about their coach, but they care about winning on the field, too. They are already bowl eligible for the second year in a row. Shieldhouse. Back at the 45 yard line, a loss of seven. Tyler Dipple, the sophomore, with the sack. And again, he starts here. This is a move, but they want to move the pocket, the, the launch point, so to speak, to confuse the defense. They can hold up Tyler Dipple coming off the edge. One of many defensive linemen for, minute, for excuse me, Wisconsin. They're going to rotate in and roll them in, especially with this tempo. Freshman Justin Duvernois on the punt. And pooches that one towards Abraderis, who will let it bounce. And some kind end over ends for Illinois down at the five yard line, a 39 yard punt. Good placement for Illinois. ESPN's College Football is presented by Five Hour Energy. The no way, no hassle way to a great morning. Visit fivehourenergy.com. It's a fire pit kind of day. You got to go with the uh, chili and hot cider, uh, warm apple cider on a day like today. Breezy and cold in Champaign. And the second possession for this Wisconsin offense. And Russell Wilson and Monty Ball and company. And Ball with the short gain up the middle. One of the, it's going to be really, really important for the defensive line of Illinois to stop the initial charge, to hold some of those big uglies up front for Wisconsin from getting to the second level. The big plays happen when they can get their guards, fullbacks, etc., up to the second level and block the safeties. We just saw Ricky Wagner come running back out to the sideline, but the starting left tackle for Wisconsin is replaced right now by the second stringer, Havenstein, and they run behind him. And Akeem Spence catches ball from behind. Well, they almost had 3,000-yard rushers last year, and they've got two very good ones again this season in Ball and James White. You talk about a great one-two punch. And Wisconsin, for really the last, I don't know, five, ten years under Bielema and Alvarez, have always had multiple runners that love to come here because they run the football, and they're going to feature tailbacks. Ball with over 1,200 yards rushing. White over 600 on the season, and it's White now in the backfield. Ewing is offset. Play action, and on the rollout, Wilson caught in the end zone, and his pass incomplete. More good pressure from the DEs and the linebackers, and now even uh, the secondary getting in on it. Well, we've got more college football coming your way later today. And some good one-loss teams in action, as well as undefeated LSU and uh, that Oregon SC matchup, highly anticipated out in Oregon tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC. And Oregon may struggle. You know, SC has much more speed than Stanford, much more, many more playmakers. It'll be an interesting game. Terry Hawthorne with the fair catch. Excellent field position here for Illinois as the defense has kept Wisconsin's offense quiet thus far in Champaign. Earlier today on College Game Day, while picking the SMU Houston game, I got a bit excited and used an expedive I shouldn't have used. I apologize, and I can promise it won't happen again. 
Scoreless here in Champaign, Illinois, Wisconsin, and the Fighting Illini. And for the Badgers at stake today, uh, to keep their Big Ten championship hopes alive, they need a road win. And for Illinois, they want to end a four-game losing streak and get things back on track. Nathan Shieldhouse and Troy Pollard now joining him in the pistol. Play action for Shieldhouse. He's got plenty of time looking for Pollard. Makes the catch out of the backfield. Corralled by Kevin Claxton. Just across the midfield stripe. Well, with a win today and then next week against Penn State, they would head to the Big Ten Championship game in what would likely be a rematch with Michigan State. Yeah, and I think they are right now the two best teams in the Big Ten, but there's still a lot of football to be played. Penn State uh, tussling with Ohio State in Columbus today. A short gainer will set up, set up a, a third and three coming up here for Illinois. Yeah, wanted more out of that. That was his last choice, but Nathan Shieldhouse is doing a great Stop job of surveying the field right now. He came all the way, started his initial read to the right, came all the way back to the left. They're only getting one yard of the play. The good thing is they're at third and three, very manageable third down. Opens up the entire playbook for Paul Petrino. Jenkins is in the slot left. The number one target, about 50% of Shieldhouse's passes have gone to him. They'll go on the ground instead and diving for the first down with the 40 is Jason Ford. We talked about third and three. Third and three, you average, you believe you're going to get three yards of carry. So you can run the ball, you can throw the ball. They're, run, they're lined up in a potential passing set, but they run the football. Again, keeping. Wisconsin's defense off balance. The move to put offensive coordinator Paul Petrino on the field looking good so far. They're playing with a lot more fire and enthusiasm. That was something that Coach Petrino told us yesterday. He wanted to bring down to the field. And see the fire in guys' eyes. On the draw, Ford runs into Claxon at the 39. Let's go back to Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you very much. We take you now out to Ann Arbor. Nebraska and Michigan on ESPN and Big Blue on the board. Denard Robinson to Jeremy Gallon, 7 0 Michigan over the Cornhusker. Well, it's a, a rough day for Michigan fans, or for uh, Michigan State fans actually rooting for Michigan today because they have the tiebreak against the Wolverines. They do not have it against the Cornhuskers over in the Legends Division. And Darius Malines inside the 30 yard line, a short route and yards after the catch. And Malines is the guy they really want to get going today. He's got speed and they really believe he's finally healthy for this season. They want to put the ball in his hands, both outside with the bubbles, quick screens, and also with the jet sweep type plays. After the 12 yard gain, it's first down. Again, the receiver screen. Short pickup again from Malines. Let's check out the Legends division and the opposite side, the M's, the N's in Iowa. Exactly. Michigan State just needs to continue doing what they do. They can control their own destiny. Michigan State has Indiana and then a road trip at Northwestern to close out the season. Hoping to get a berth in the Big Ten championship game on December 3rd. And diving into the backfield is Borland to make the tackle. Both he and Mike Taylor, their two backers, with over 100 tackles on the season, the top two guys in the Big Ten. That was a run blitz. Borland was coming regardless. Didn't matter what the play was, run or pass, he was going to come get him. Broke it up, forced the quarterback again to give the ball because on a replay, if there's any question, you always give it. Scoreless first half in Champaign. The teams will head the other way. Back for the second after this. as we get set to start the second quarter and uh, a fast pace and not many opportunities. Both sides have had the ball just twice 
through the first 15 minutes, Illinois still has it right here on their second drive of the game with Nathan Shieldhouse at quarterback. And it's a third down inside the Wisconsin 30. And the catch made by Ford in the flat, trying to shake loose from Cromartie, and then a bunch of his Badger buddies come over to help. You know, the trouble is, <laughs> he lost four yards after trying to fight for more. And that's, that's one of the issues. Make, he makes a great catch. If he'd gotten down right there, would have gained a couple yards. Instead, he loses three or four, which is difficult. Great catch, but not good yardage. How about the call here on fourth down, Mike? And well, a, a field goal kicker that's good, but has not has had just one attempt in the last five games for them. You get very few opportunities against Wisconsin because of what they do offensively. You need to take advantage and try to score on each one. They're into the wind here. This would be a long, difficult field goal. I concur completely. Go for it. Fourth and 14. Shieldhouse. Pressure up the middle from Hamer in the pass. Complete to Jenkins in a first down at the 12. Tremendous job by Nathan Shieldhouse. He had a breakdown of protection. You see the the ISO on the receiver right here coming across. Finds that open hole, sort of sits in that hole in the zone over the middle. Shieldhouse finds him. That's a huge conversion for the fourth down. 18-yard pickup. Ford, the first down carry. Runs into the heart of that Wisconsin defense. Right now, Illinois is playing with like a man on a mission whether it's for their coach whether it's because they're tired of losing and this is a great Wisconsin football team that's ready to play but Illinois is fired up they need something here though they wanted that fast start getting them all in the end zone first would be a fast start they need. second and ten And Illinois with something to prove today coming right at you. But the real thing is they got on the board first. They're getting the fast start they need. They've got to finish. Seven to nothing. Illinois with the lead over Wisconsin. Their first scoring drive in a first half since back in the Indiana game on October 8th when they were 6-0 and and becoming bowl eligible. And remember, they, they feel right now they have something to prove. The entire offensive team is very maligned, as was they've been their coach. They're doing the right things, pushing the right buttons right now. Team uh, in a bit of a desperate mode right now, having lost four straight. Let's go to Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you very much. The Taco Bell Studio Update. Michigan State, Indiana, Kirk Cousins Cousins already with a long touchdown pass, and here another, this one to Keyshawn Martin, 47 yards into the end zone, Michigan State leading 17-0. Michigan, Nebraska on ESPN, Michigan leading 10-6, and Northwestern over Minnesota, 21-7. Well, Michigan State gets a share of the division with a win today, and uh, if Michigan beats Nebraska, they would have the tiebreak over the Wolverines in the completion to tune out by midfield at a first down Wisconsin. Pickup of 20 on the play. Well, there is just one race remaining in the NASCAR Sprint Cup season. It's the Ford 400 at Homestead, Miami. Coverage begins on ESPN Sunday at 2 Eastern. Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart, the last two standing, they're the only ones with a shot at the crown. First time in six years, it won't be Jimmy Johnson. Toon is the motion man. Ball with the carry. Stepping over one of his offensive linemen into Illinois territory, a gain of two, second and eight. The Illini doing a great job of bottling up Monty Ball, not letting it started. Part of it's been their ability to stay on the 
blocks to keep their heads in the gaps as they move. That's one of the things with Wisconsin. Those big guys sort of obscure the ball carrier sometimes. Illinois has done a great job of finding him and getting him to the ground. Ball averages a touchdown every eight carries this year. He's eight for 45 yards here in the first half. That's how prolific he has been. Russell Wilson to the air again. It's two with the catch inside the 25. Justin Green on the tackle. There's great chemistry between Russell Wilson and Toon. You can see way off coverage right here. Got plenty of time, plenty of room. Ball is thrown just as he makes that break. Great timing. These guys have thrown that ball a thousand times probably since this summer. Yeah, he had one of his best games of the season last week. A career high eight catches against Minnesota. Had over 100 yards and two touchdowns in the game. That was a 24 yard pickup. On first down, Wilson. Yes. Illinois trying to scoop it up. Jonathan Brown on the run. Looking for blockers. And Brown inside the 40. As Wisconsin turns it over. The two playmakers for Illinois. Whitney Merciless coming off the edge. They talked about they thought they could attack the perimeter, get some edge pressure, beats the tackle right there. As you can see, and the ball comes out. And the other playmaker, Jonathan Brown, scoops it, trying to score. Illinois in great field position right now. Now, an interesting decision here for Illinois. As they told us they would do, a switch at quarterback to Riley O'Toole after that 11-play drive engineered by Shearhouse. And the handoff AJ to the wideout, A.J. Jenkins, for first down yardage. And that's an interesting deal. You've got Shieldhouse at 9 for 10, maybe playing the best football right now. At the same time, you've got the word that you're going to play the other guy. Illegal chop block. Offense. Number 68, 15-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. In order to maintain credibility as a coach with your players, if you tell a young man you're going to play, you're going to get two series in the first half, you have to play him. Otherwise, that young man's confidence goes in the dumpster. Part of Ron Zook's plan to try and shake up what had been a stagnant offense. They've gone up tempo. They've brought the offensive coordinator down from the press box onto the field. And they also wanted to give O'Toole an opportunity at quarterback. So they are true to their word whether or not you agree with replacing Shieldhouse, who, who looked pretty good on that last drive. Yeah, it's no coincidence he played very, very well because he wants to be the guy out there. O'Toole with the hand to the impressive burst by the true freshman Barton Young, who didn't have a carry in their last game. He's already got a touchdown here in the first half. Tackle by number 24. We talked about tempo. They're going to go up tempo. Petrino on the side that you see him right there. Riley O'Toole early. And also get the receiver ball in the hands of the receivers on running plays. O'Toole looking across the middle. By the tight end, John Davis. Chris Borland had the coverage. And that looks like that'll be enough for the first down again. Both quarterbacks are throwing the ball very well, but maybe what's being missed in all this is the receivers are making contested catches. That's something early in the season they did not believe they were doing well enough at Illinois. A receiver screen to get the ball into the hands of their playmakers. The two quickest, fastest guys are probably Langford and Malines, and they really want to get those guys involved, especially if Jenkins is getting so much double coverage and so much attention, those guys should be singled in most coverages. So far, the offensive changes working for Illinois. Second and six. Troy Pollard is the setback. They're trying to things going on right now. Troy Pollard and Donovan Young getting their opportunities. Really want to
take, do most, most of it, but also they're running at the edge. They talked about attacking the perimeter. They must have seen something in the films. They believe they can attack the perimeter defense of Wisconsin. So far, they're doing it very, very well. The Illini rediscovering their offensive energy here in the first half, knocking on the door again. Young misses his way to the one close to the goal line. And they will spot him just short. Let's take a look. He got great push at the end. I think he got some help. You see him inside the pile there. And he is really close, but down. The ball actually touched down. You see it right there about a half a yard short. Second and goal. Ron Zook's still not really happy. <laughs> you look at that face, you think he was down by a touchdown. Young with his second touchdown of the day. And they're getting exactly what they want. They want energy, they want to run the football, and they want to score touchdowns. So far, mission accomplished. Fourteen to nothing, Illinois. Stunning Wisconsin so far in the first half. Donovan Young, the true freshman, with a couple of scores. And the reacts from Nathan Schilhouse. A great start for the Illini. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Audi, Truth in Engineering. Shot from the Illinois campus, so that sun that we saw earlier has gone away. A cloudy day in the sky, but things are looking good for Illinois' offense, which has been subpar in the last four games, each of those a loss, but today, Donovan Young, outstanding for the true freshman with a couple of scores and an offense that all of a sudden looks potent. Two quarterbacks throwing the ball very accurately. Petrino on the field. It's worked out very well so far. If the Wisconsin Badgers were thinking about next week's game against Penn State, a moment for them to refocus. Suddenly, they're in a fight in Champaign. It's been a fast-moving game. Uh, there may not be many opportunities with many possessions to score today, but uh, Illinois tallying on two of their three chances and benefiting from a Wisconsin turnover for the 14-0 lead. And an offense that averages over 45 points per game has some work to do as Monty Bell gets the carry out across the 40. It'll set up second and five. If you average five yards a carry, you can get back pretty quickly, though. That's, that's Wisconsin football. Pound the ball, throw the play action. They don't need to be too fancy. But right now, Illinois has used that time of possession against them. Usually that you're worried about Wisconsin running the ball, taking the game away from you. Illinois is taking the, the ball away from, kept it away from Wisconsin. Wisconsin yet to get 40 rushing yards total for the team. Ball or no carry. Gets to the edge, runs into Tavon Wilson, who's wearing Trulon Henry's number, and look at him muscle forward as the ball pops loose. And Wisconsin able to get it back. Jared Aberderis with the recovery. Monty Ball, tough to tackle in the open field. Watch him, he breaks three or four tackles here. He's getting mobbed, gang tackled, fighting, scratching. The ball is definitely out right there. That's one of the things which you cannot protect it when you're really fighting for balls, but those guys, Johnny on the spot for somebody to fall on that football. That's a major deal for Wisconsin. The first fumble for a running back since their second game of last year. Nearly a thousand touches for the running backs. And a fumble that they are fortunate to jump on. And now Wilson with the scramble tripped up back at his own 45 by Jonathan Brown. Well, let's take a look back with our Liberty Mutual Drive recap. And speaking of turnovers. All starts with Whitney Merciless. Have no mercy. 
And then Jonathan Brown, scooping to try to score, getting Pollard on the edge. They talked about attacking the edge. And then finally following Jay Prosh into the end zone. Donovan Young getting that key conversion of the turnover. Even while the Illinois offense has been struggling, the defense has been stout over the course of their four-game skid, and they are getting the attention of this Wisconsin offense today. Jonathan Brown bringing more pressure on Wilson. Yeah, almost like a delayed blitz. He, he waited half a step and then came when he recognized the blocking pattern up front. Put pressure, got right in Russell Wilson's face, forcing to throw that ball a little quickly or a little off kilter. In completion. Big third down for both teams. Wisconsin needs this to get back in the game. Illinois excited, playing with great energy. Third and 13. You got to shut them down. Wilson tucks it. He's got to get to the Illinois 41, and he will not get there. Hauled down by Michael Buchanan at the 45 after a nine yard gain. I don't think there's any question that they're going to punt the ball away here. Although this is fake territory, Illinois should keep their defense on the field. Fourth and five past the 50. It's automatic what you call safe return. You keep the defense on there, put your returner back. Make sure that they do not get a fake. They cannot get a first down here. Hawthorne is back at his own 10-yard line. The way that this Illinois offense has moved the ball in the first half. Will Wisconsin get it back before halftime? The Fighting Illini with the lead and possession. Well, surprising developments so far here in Champaign. A 14-0 Illinois lead. They've scored on two of their three possessions. Nathan Shieldhouse back in at quarterback from their own five-yard line. And he'll keep it not across the 10-yard line, tackled by Mike Taylor. That was a naked bootleg, meaning that he had no help, but that is all on his athleticism. Nathan Shieldhouse, so difficult to tackle in the open field, makes six yards on almost a broken play. Young, the deep man in the eye, he's got a couple of rushing touchdowns today. And a short game third down coming up, but first here's Wendy. Beth, thank you very much. It's the 128th edition of the game. Harvard and Yale all tied up here at seven until Collier Winters hits Alex Sarkeesian 20-yard strike, makes it 14-7 Crimson. Wisconsin trying to keep their hopes alive for a berth in the Big Ten championship game. Illinois giving them all they can handle thus far. Shieldhouse, the short toss, and that will be shy of the first down marker, which is at the 15-yard line. I don't think that's exactly what they want to do. They got too much pressure too early on the play. It was supposed to be a play action type thing. The tight end got stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Some penetration came in, forced to dump the ball off, come up short. Same thing. Now, this is, it's not usually fake territory, but I guarantee you that the Wisconsin coaches have said, make sure the ball is punted. With no fakes, no fakes. It's half a yard. It, could be a major shift in field position here for Wisconsin. Oh! Is left by Duvalois, who continues to have some problems. And he has set up Wisconsin at the two-yard line. Yeah, that's very, very difficult. It's cold. Those guys usually have their hands and their pockets on the sideline. They're trying to catch some balls, but this is a, a good snap. Hits him right in the hands. He just sort of bobbles it, probably trying to rush it just a little bit down there with the feeling of that end zone at his back. And instead, he has now set up Wisconsin at the two-yard line. He dropped one against Purdue, had one blocked in the Penn State loss. First and goal, Badgers. Their first touch in the red zone today. Ball off the left side, denied. 
Ashante Williams and Terry Hawthorne on a stop. Great job by the Illinois defense. They got pushed off the line, but the linebackers filled in and safeties from the outside came around the initial block point, stopped the, the running back for a one-yard gain, which is significant down there. Pretty tough with the power of Wisconsin, though, to keep them out of the end zone from the one-yard line. Illinois showing the bear with five linemen. Buchanan standing up on the left side. Ball diving into the end zone for the score. Each team has gotten one turnover and one touchdown off a of turnover, so they're even in that category. This shows you a little bit the explosiveness of ball, too. He takes off from about the two or the three yard line and just launches himself, goes through and over the blockers and the would be tacklers. 24th rushing touchdown, 28th score on the season for Monty Ball. Tops in the country. Extra point is good. <laughs> Illinois had the momentum and the two touchdown lead and then it came apart on the punt and Wisconsin punches it in. A teaching moment on the Illinois sideline. Junior defensive back Terry Hawthorne trying to pick up the spirits of the freshman punter Justin Duvernois. He has had a couple of shaky moments already this year and drops the snap on the punt attempt back inside his own five yard line and Monty Ball ends up with a rushing touchdown. It's a one score game and let's check in with Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you very much. Coming up in just a few minutes of the half with Oklahoma State's loss Friday night, we have a shakeup in the BCS. We'll give you the details on the Big Ten title race and also highlights from the 128th meeting between Harvard and Yale. I'm joined by Robert Smith and Todd McShay at the half. Thank you, Wendy. And it's uh, back to Riley O'Toole at quarterback, the true freshman with his second uh, stint at QB here in the first half. Led them on a scoring drive his first time out. Jenkins. and a running play and a nine-yard gain. Jenkins, very, very impressive. That's a jet sweep into the short side. He saw it was going to get jumbled up, cut back, and then made a nine-yard gain cutting back across the field at full speed. I'm really impressed with his athleticism. Part of the Illinois game plan, get it to the wideouts to make some plays. And the pass complete to Jenkins. That'll be good for the first down out to the 34. Antonio Finellis on the coverage. I'll tell you one thing. Riley O'Toole has a very slow delivery compared to Shilas. He's got to step up, make those decisions much quicker, or not stare down receivers. Or we're going to get an interception going the other way. Part of the game plan today for Illinois to use both quarterbacks. Underneath, power now to the 30. Orland in on the tackle, along with Bo Allen. And we're in that two-minute mode now where they'd like to take the ball down the field. Time is sort of of the essence, but both teams have all the timeouts left, so there's plenty of time in terms of how they manage the clock. Nothing new right here with the two-minute offense. They've actually been running it for much of this first half, trying to change their tempo and power it out to midfield. That'll move the sticks again. Question as to whether or not the ball was down See right at the end of the play. He's going down right there. Boom, ball in control. Comes out by the ground, which nobody's going to like that. I'll tell you what, coaches are still going to still going to talk to him about that because you want to hand the ball to the official. You don't want to let the ball come out at any time. The draw is forward. Wiggles away from Taylor. And look at him push forward inside the field. Wisconsin to the 39 and a first down. Another first down and right now sort of magical the energy that the Illinois team has and whether it's Petrino on the sidelines whether it's that turnover that just resulted in an easy touchdown for Wisconsin. They want to get it back and this offense beleaguered the last couple weeks has really come to life. 12 yard gain and a rushing attack that is close to 100 for the day. Uh, incomplete 
looking deep down the sideline to Jenkins. Here's a look at uh, the rest of the lineup coming your way this afternoon on ABC and ESPN, including USC and number four, Oregon, tonight at 8 Eastern. Barkley may be a more accurate quarterback than Luck. He's not the full athlete. He can't run like Luck does, but he's got great weapons. His receivers, especially if Woods is healthy, they can create some problems for Oregon's defense. Beth Mowens, along with former Oregon head coach and AD Mike Bellotti, a minute 12 to go, Illinois trying to not only get the upset, but really shake up the Big Ten and the championship picture for the inaugural championship game on December 3rd. Kevin Claxton on the tackle right there. And there's the first timeout for Illinois with one minute to go. We will be back in 30 seconds for the finish of this first half. Touchdown lead for Illinois. One minute to go here in the first half in Champaign. And now our conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. Michigan State can clinch a share of the Legends division. Penn State can clinch a share of the leaders with a win today. Eight teams are bowl eligible. And the most probable scenario looks like a Wisconsin-Michigan State rematch in the Big Ten championship game. But that could all change with an Illinois win here today. Riley O'Toole at quarterback. He and Shieldhouse have shared duties today. Powered, stuffed at the 31-yard line by Chris Borland. Are we going to use another timeout, I would assume? And th there was some discussion between Coach Zook and Coach Petrino about the no-huddle offense and whether you get up on the line and you check plays at the line of scrimmage Coach Zook said, let's not do that. Petrino says, we may have to do that. You see it right there. Slows things down, though. Well, and while we have a moment here with the timeout, let's go ahead and look back at uh, that huge game between Michigan State and Wisconsin. And the Hail Mary from Kirk Cousins to Keith Nickel. Scary play. Every coach always holds his breath. You've got people in position to make the play. They don't make the play. Great catch. And then the guy battling to get into the end zone. How your fortunes can change on one play, the last play of a game. And of course, for Brett Bielema and uh, Wisconsin, another uh, similar moment, unfortunately for them, in the Ohio State game as well. There are two losses this year in heartbreaking fashion. On fourth and two for Illinois. O'Toole. He's got it for the tight end, John Davis. Big fourth down conversion for the Illini. Huge conversion. And John Davis is their fast tempo tight end. He's a guy that's very comfortable at a wide receiver position at tight end to keep him in there for the up tempo stuff. Still have two timeouts to use. O'Toole to the air. Davis is in. Pass completion number three, John Davis. At the 15 yard line, another first down. At the minimum, they're going to get a field goal attempt. They've been able to save the timeouts by getting first downs or getting out of bounds. There's no question, though, in my mind, that Ron Zook, Paul Petrino, the entire Illini team won a touchdown. 15 first downs to just five for Wisconsin here in the first half. He's got Jenkins. Touchdown, Illinois. And a flag down on the far side. That's typically either holding pass interference or a pick that may have freed up Jenkins. Let's see what they call. Pass interference. Offense. Number three. 15-yard penalty. Repeat. First down. Let's see if we can figure out right there. Yeah, this was a pick play that freed him up. You can see I talked about that. Uh, John, John Davis ran a rub route. He ran through the defender. That's very rarely called because he didn't really blind. He just nudged him with one shoulder. But that's a huge play because of where it puts now Illinois way back here. From the 15, way back out to the 30. Hey, 
O'Toole trying to get away from the pressure and does so. O'Toole unable to stay on his feet to the 26. Borland tripped him up. And a timeout, Illinois. Here's another look at the penalty. Okay. Boy, I'll tell you what, that is, that little nudge right there, that should not have been called. Wow. That was a very poor judgment decision by the official, I will say that, because typically, if the guy blocks him or tries to get in his face, he actually dipped the shoulder like he's actually trying to miss to get into his route. Now, that was spoken like a true offensive coach, Did, though, too. Didn't look like a, enough rub in that route to... Uh, Deserve the flag and a tough break there for Illinois. One of the things, though, when teams play a team that runs a lot of crossing routes, they alert the officials that watch those blocks on the crossing routes because sometimes those guys come so wide open and it is truly a, a rub route, a pick route. We call it rub so that it's not a pick. Kick, picks are illegal. Rubs <laughs> maybe a little bit more. Uh, you offensive acceptable. guys were able to work that into the lexicon, so yeah. we, we wouldn't call it a pick or a screen. 22 seconds left for Illinois to try and get some more points on the board. Second and 21. Riley O'Toole, the true freshman at quarterback, trying to generate another scoring drive. Stands in, hits Davis again. Ball pops out at the end of the play, no whistle, and still alive and out of bounds inside the 10. To Darius Malines. Whoa, that Third was down a, and a few. That was a lucky play in that I think it's going to be ruled down right there. Yep. But because he stopped the clock, though, it wouldn't have stopped the clock. So they got a break by allowing it to go out of bounds. The clock being stopped, they still have been able to save their timeout. They probably have at least two plays now. I think they're going to take a look upstairs to see that yeah. probably should not have been ruled a fumble that was probably down right there see what happens we're gonna let it go Illinois plays on O'Toole to Jenkins at the five diving for the power but he was out of bounds inside the three and that is good enough for the first down six seconds to go in the half okay let's see take a look Oh, yeah, yep. for that ball's out now. So it's where the ball is when his foot touches out of bounds. Well, but it's going to come back with a flag on the play. Repeat, second down. A couple of red zone penalties hampering Illinois' efforts to get into the end zone. And now you've got the potential for two plays Question, made. third down. It's the problem you have six seconds, you've got one timeout. Six seconds is usually the, the longest amount of time you could ever expect to get into the playoff. They're probably going to elect to kick the field goal right now. Derek Demke, they're going to bring him on and go ahead and try the field goal here on third down. A 41-yard attempt after another offensive pass interference penalty. And for Dimke, just one attempt in their last timeout. five Wisconsin. games. 30-second timeout. And uh, we, Brett we, Bielema wants him to think about the 42-yard miss at the end of the Penn yeah. State game right here. Yeah, Wisconsin trying to ice the kicker. I think the weather might do that by itself, but he's trying to get his head a little bit, make him think about those things. He's a very, very accurate kicker. He hasn't kicked that many, yeah. had that many opportunities lately. Well, and as every kicker and fan knows, it's not the seven you make. It's the, <laughs> the eighth one that you miss that folks remember. And uh, Demke trying to put up three more here for a 10-point Illinois lead. Or as they say, what have you done for me exactly. lately? Exactly. How was your last kick? How was your last shot? You know, do you remember your last <laughs> shot? <laughs> well, you, you got to be like a defensive back and a, and a shooter. You can't think about the last sure. one. You got to think about the next one for Derek Demke right here the senior let's uh let's see if we can go back to that uh, was it another pick on the pass interference it looks like is what the call was it, wow well, he, he missed him he missed the <laughs> he might have he might have tried one of the things that you should have if his hands go up like he's trying to receive a pass they rarely call it a couple of question marks on both of those pass interference penalties and now dimke the 41 yard Sneaks it inside the left upright. 
Wow, a touchdown called back, a play that may have resulted in a, in a next play touchdown called back. Get a field goal out of it. They still got to feel very good. Each side with just five possessions here in this first half. Illinois scoring on three of those as uh, the Fighting Illini try and pull off the big upset and put a major dent into the Big Ten championship hopes for the Wisconsin Badgers. Beth Mullins along with Mike Bellotti today at Memorial Stadium and the 17-7 lead and the changes that the Illinois staff made offensively have worked well for them here today. Absolutely. Bringing Paul Petrino down, there's seemingly more energy. Both quarterbacks have played very well. They know they're going to get judged by how they played in the first half, who will get to play in the second half. They both put together a great body of work. If I'm Ron Zook, I'm very frustrated right now. Those two penalties I don't think should have been called and I'll say that both as a coach and as, as an analyst upstairs yeah. those were difficult I don't see how they even could call them and that took points off the board for Illinois they have to be frustrated by it. well and a major project in the Wisconsin locker room to get them back on track uh, this is one of the top scoring teams in the country held way below their average in the first half today at Illinois 46 and a half points per game, just seven in the first half. 17 7 Illinois. Here's Wendy Nix with our. And college football presented by Five Hour Energy. 17 to seven, uh, seven, Illinois with the lead over Wisconsin in what would completely shake up. The leaders division in the Big Ten Conference, Wisconsin, with a win today, would set themselves up one-on-one uh, -on -one against Penn State at home next week to win the division. But a loss today, there could be a four-way tie after the games are played next week. Yeah, there's so much football to be played and so many permutations and combinations. I'm not sure, but right now, Wisconsin has only scored because they got a botched punt at the one-yard line. So they've got to get some offense going. Illinois has been controlling the football and running the ball, multiple quarterbacks, Offensive coordinator on the sideline doing a lot of things right and converting turnovers to touchdowns. They got to keep doing that if they want to continue. Illinois is playing like a team with a mission. Illinois deferred to the second half, so they will get the ball at their own 20 to start out this second half. Here's how it looks right now with Penn State a game up. They play Ohio State at 3:30 in Columbus today. But it's conceivable that Purdue, Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Penn State could all end up with five and three records. No question, it, it is possible. Now, probable, I don't know, but very, very possible. The interesting thing to me too is that Illinois has two great quarterbacks. Each has only thrown one incompletion, so I'm not sure if they're gonna continue to rotate quarterbacks or just play Nathan Shieldhouse. Let's sort of see as this game goes. Renewed interest in West Lafayette and Columbus today as an Illinois win here would reopen the door of possibility for them to get into the Big Ten championship game. It's Nathan Shieldhouse at quarterback. He has split time this afternoon with Riley O'Toole for an Illinois offense that has struggled to score in first halves of play, so they really shook things up today, and it's paid off with 17 points. They're running the football, they're attacking the perimeter, they're getting the ball on the edge, the quarterbacks are making great decisions, and the protection is holding up because of the improved running game. Hadn't scored in the first half in their last four games. And a couple of Donovan Young rushing touchdowns and the field goal by Dinky as Shieldhouse hits the deck at the 24-yard line. It's going to be third and six. Pat Muldoon on the tackle. And right now, I'm sure Coach Bielema has talked to his team about the fact that whether we talked about it or not, obviously we are overlooking this Illinois team. We've got a game right here, guys. Doesn't matter what we did in the first half, but we can affect how we play in the second half, and this is our second half. Their defense right now doing a better job creating a third and long. Third and six is considered third and long. More difficult, less manageable for the offense. Shieldhouse with some time. Malines across the 30 to 30 down. The ball is loose. Wisconsin able to scoop it up. Mike Taylor with the turnover for the Badgers. Had the necessary distance for the first down. Ball looks like it came out, but we can get a quick look here. Here to some ground level. Rolling on the field is a catch. 
followed by a fumble. First down, Wisconsin. Hard to, hard to tell from that angle. Let's see this other angle. Oh, his that's Chris knee, Borland. His knee could be down. I, I tell you what. I think from that other view, yeah. uh, Mike, it's clear that it comes out before the knee goes down. Right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's very, very close. Very close. But evidently, they've seen enough upstairs. Well, I take that back. They're probably going to stop time to take a little bit longer look. Or Coach Zook has called a timeout. Illinois time out. calls timeout. Five first half possessions for Wisconsin. One trip into the red zone, which they scored on. They might have it deep in Illinois territory when we come back. <laughs> Illinois has challenged the fumble. They lose the challenge and they lose a timeout as well. So they cannot challenge anymore. Uh, Coach Zook tried to get it to be declared a non-catch, so the fumble would be irrelevant. However, they call it a catch and a fumble, Wisconsin possession. The upstairs officials confirm that it was a catch and a fumble, so it's Wisconsin ball at the Illinois 30. Ball slips. As he gets to the 29-yard line, it's a Wisconsin offense that has averaged 46 points per game held to just the one score in the first half. Early in the year, the Illinois defense was tremendous at stops after turnovers. They lost that ability during this four-game slide. Let's see if they can regain it right now, because this would be a huge stop. The only way Wisconsin has scored today is based on Illinois miscues. Shift again to the tight end to the right side, and now they'll send Pedersen over there as well. The throw the other way to Nick Toon to the 20-yard line, close to the first down marker. That's the fourth catch today for Nick. Justin Green on the tackle. The quarterback probably has the opportunity on that to either run the running play call or throw the quick pass if he likes the coverage look outside. Illinois did a great job of moving their front to match the strength of Wisconsin's with their shift. Thus, he got the one-on-one -on -one matchup at the outside. He liked better than the potential running play to the strong side. Third and inches. Monty Ball behind Brady Ewing, and he reaches for the 20, which is where the first down marker is. Good push up the middle by the linebacker Ian Thomas. I don't think he made it based on that spot, but uh, going to be very, very close. This is a great job, a great fill in there. Ian Thomas, a middle linebacker, came through. And then uh, safety looks like Tavon Wilson, safety slash corner, came in to finish that one. This play is under further review. We're going to take a look at where the spot is if it stays as a fourth and inches uh, Wisconsin on the season four of six on fourth downs this year you see the yellow stripe that he's got to get to and it certainly appears to be short upon further review the spot of the ball stands it is fourth and inches for Wisconsin at the 21 of Illinois Monty Ball straight up the middle, first down. Monty Ball and the entire Wisconsin offense, tough to stop two times in a row, only having to gain a foot. Monty coming in, the leading rusher in the Big Ten. He's got a touchdown today to bring him to 24 rushing touchdowns on the season, 28 total. And Wisconsin in their second trip of the day inside the red zone. That's been it. Second and short, Kevin Zeitler with a nice block up front. And Wisconsin in the red zone, very, very impressive, if, if not unbelievable. 
96 percent of the time they score but 87 percent of the time they score touchdowns that is the is best in the country mike no surprise on that <laughs> those are great stats their first venture into the red zone ball scored on a one-yard run They send the extra blocker to the right side. That's where ball goes. End over end inside the 10-yard line. Ian Thomas got him by the legs. Great fill by the secondary there. They came up and got in that hole. It's that one of those numbers games when they shift tight ends and motion running backs. They get to pick up a half a man. You've got to fill in with your linebacker scraping to it or your safeties and corners coming in and tackling just inside the 10 yard line they need to get inside the nine for the first down it's my ball again and the spin they stood him up at the nine and the spot will be just outside of the nine yard line. Jonathan Brown, the first contact. We may have our second straight <laughs> you know, short yardage. Here we go. Looks like they're going to measure this one. Wisconsin able to convert on one fourth down play already in the drive. Great job by Jonathan Brown finishing that. He and Terry Hawthorne combined. Merciless looked like he got a piece of him too to slow him down. They're going to be short. That'll set up another fourth down situation for Brett Bielema. You always have to be aware of keeping your eyes right in the secondary. These fourth and short situations lead to potential play action stuff where you're, you're running so hard to fill your run responsibility your eyes forget to look at tight ends or running backs releasing for the pass they've converted on one uh, so far on this drive and now another fourth down and short and goal Badgers running to that right side again which means they either like the offensive lineman on the right side or the matchup Foster typically is this one of the smaller D tackles in really division one football he, he lists him at 260 although coaches say he's probably closer to 280 now but if I was going to run at one guy in that group it would be at that side you got to keep Spence at over 300 pounds on the other side just to make sure and no doubt about it. What's at stake for Wisconsin? Well, they need to win this game to set up a winner take all matchup at home next week against Penn State in the leaders division. They lose this game and we start, start talking about the possibility of a four way tie potentially at the end of regular season play in the Big Ten leaders. Do they just draw straws in that case? <laughs> Would that be easier? Duckworth in motion. Monty Ball to the five. One of the exciting parts about the addition of Nebraska to the 12th team to a championship game. Usually we'd be wrapping up Big Ten play this weekend, Mike. We add another weekend of games and then the Big Ten championship on the 3rd of December. The relevancy, the importance, the excitement surrounding it. You're right, that, that's what a championship game does to a conference. When you get that, these games, and usually the Pac-10 after this week would not even be playing. So they, they tend to lose something in the eyes of the public, and sometimes the bolster simply because you don't play. In the Legends division, Michigan State in control heading into their game today. Wilson looking for Nick Toon in the corner, and a penalty flag as Toon is pushed out of bounds. Toon a tough matchup at 6'3", 220. He's a big physical receiver. He had him beat by a step or two, and I think the corner had to have initial contact. Pass interference, defense, number 26, 
Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. I thought Justin Gree did a great job of getting there. The problem is he put his hands on him early. Watch right there is the contact going in prior to. He did rich up, rip and strip through the hands, which you're taught to do. Just can't have any contact early. In the red zone today, one defensive and two offensive pass interference penalties on Illinois. Monty Ball stuffed. And we should note quickly, too, it is a patchwork secondary today due to some injuries for Illinois. Tavon Wilson has moved over to safety. Green and Hawthorne are the starters at corner. And Pat Nixon Yeoman also getting ample playing time at the other safety today. One other thing to notice is they're tackling low down here. If you get up high, these guys will push you. Their bulk is too much, but if you go low, you can stop them before they get started. Ball on second down. Forced to the outside. The number nine jersey. Just being out there, some gives me feelings. I we lost a player one time, and our kids wore that jersey of his every game. And I, I know the guys that wore the jersey felt empowered to a degree. They felt like I've got to do something special to honor that young man. Henry is out for the rest of the regular season after a gunshot wound over the weekend, coming uh, to the rescue of a couple of his teammates in an off-campus incident. On third down, and right up and running ball, touchdown. Confusion that uh, the linebacker had to cover and stepped up inside. I, I was going to say it would be interesting if they hadn't gotten that because you look at, they still need a field goal, so would they have gone for a field goal touchdown? All a moot point right now. Back swing now of the backfield uncovered, and Wilson finds him, which he always does. Sees the field very, very well. A remarkable season continues for Monty Ball for the 11th time in their 11 games he has scored at least two touchdowns and he's got them both today for the Badgers and a 17-14 Illinois lead 6-27 to go in the third. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event, where you can drive away in any new 2012 VW for practically just your signature. Illinois in front by three, trying for the upset of Wisconsin, and they have had some calls and non-calls go against them uh, in the red zone today, as Wisconsin has a couple of touchdowns from Monty Ball, one rushing, one receiving. Donovan Young with two scores for Illinois, and the Derek Dimke 41-yard field goal is the difference right now. Let's go back to the coordinators for Illinois yelling at the officials you got to call it both ways and that's Paul Petrino the offensive coordinator and both coordinators were down there because they got called Zook you can see see the pick there in the right there it happens you, you can see again how the inside receiver comes down and actually blocks the re, the defender here's another tip where they're going to call this right here that they're calling is the same thing when he doesn't even touch the guy that was called the other was not the one against Illinois was called, negating a chance. The one against Wisconsin was not called, and they scored a touchdown. Here's Wendy Nix in the studio. Beth, thank you very much. To check on the Furman Paladins, surprising Florida. 15-7 game here. Colin Anderson to Sedaric Cunningham. A 47-yard touchdown pass makes it 22-7. The Gators have since scored 22-14. Riley O'Toole will keep out to the 24. The coaches, Mike, told us pregame and a flag coming down late is going to go against Wisconsin. We were told O'Toole would play a couple series in the first half, and now Anthony here he is Flynn in the second. Over. Dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 87, 15-yard penalty. Results in an automatic first down. Well, I think the, quarter, the coaches were very comfortable with both quarterbacks. Riley O'Toole, seven out of eight. He actually completed two more passes that could call back, one for a touchdown. So they were really pleased, I think, with how that worked out. They're going to continue it, evidently, this half. That was a late hit that was way back, about 15 yards behind the play as O'Toole tries to go deep to 
Jenkins, and it's intercepted by Antonio Fallis, his fourth pick of the season, and that one O'Toole into a strong wind. That ball didn't finish for him. Uh, Jenkins was wide open early. He tossed the ball up, and, and Jenkins, I think, thought the ball was going to carry further down the field, too. He didn't do a good job. Here you see it right there. The ball just dies, and Finellis makes a great break on the ball at the end as it's dying, throwing into the wind. Difficult throw. Need more battle out of Jenkins, though, for that football. Well, Jenkins had him beat, too, but the ball not out in front of him. And the recovery late by Finellis. A couple of turnovers and a botched punt attempt inside the five-yard line today for Illinois. Wisconsin on its last possession, scoring off of a fumble recovery and a big burst from Honeyball out to the 45-yard line. First down, Badgers. That was a very physical series last time. Several fourth downs where Wisconsin moved the ball via the ground versus Illinois. Now they're right back on the field. The defense is right back on the field. You can only hold up so many times. Now they're starting to get some of those gashing holes. They cannot allow that to happen. Wisconsin looking better offensively here in this third quarter than they did in the first half. Russell Wilson. The give to ball. Out to the 48-yard line. Second and about six. Here's what's coming up the rest of the college football slate today on ABC and ESPN. Number one LSU in action. And that one loss Oregon team. Will they have enough late to jump over Alabama into the national championship picture? That's a great question. I, I still think people perceive the Alabama LSU game as much closer. It went to overtime. Only a three-point differential. Oregon beaten in regulation by a couple touchdowns was more. They scored late. So it'll be interesting to see how everybody remembers that. Of course, the one-loss teams now back in play after Iowa State shocked Oklahoma State last night in overtime in Ames. Wilson scrambles to try and buy some time. Good coverage downfield and a flag in the backfield. As we recap last night's game at Iowa State in the extra session, getting the job done. Yeah, Brandon Whedon, three touchdowns, but three interceptions. A couple of tip balls and ended up being intercepted. Uh, Holding offense, number 67, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, second down. Very easily could have been that Oklahoma State looking forward to the big Oklahoma game in Bedlam. Here we've got the play that just occurred in the penalty. Tough to see right there. That's good for Illinois, though. One of the things, in the first six games, they were plus three in turnover ratio. The last four games, they've been minus three. Today, they're losing the turnover battle, and it's affected them on the scoreboard. Second and 16 for Wilson out of the shotgun. They throw to Duckworth, out to the 45, and steps out of bounds at the 46th. First catch for him today. One thing about Illinois defense, they're a matchup zone, which means they tend to gravitate to the people who come into their zone. It leaves some open field, so they're trying to play more consistent field zone stuff to watch out for the scrambles by Russell Wilson. It's affecting them, leaving some of the people wide open in those zone areas. Gets half the yardage back, third and seven. sides of the ball and a reminder it's a new center today for Wisconsin Ryan Groy making his first start there illegal snap number 67 offense five yard penalty it remains third down the movement will actually be on the right guard fifth year senior Josh Oglesby Ryan Groy sort of a neat story the correction that was number 79 79 he started as a fullback in their jumbo package. He's a big back. He started a couple games last year and this year as the fullback. Now he's the starting center. I don't know if that's a promotion or a demotion. I'm not sure. Well, now it's third and 12. And the snap from Gray goes over Wilson's head. The foot race for the loose ball. And Russell Wilson just beats out Michael Buchanan to get it back at the 23. And for the first time today, the newcomer at center 
makes an appearance in a negative fashion. Probably thinking a little bit too much, worrying about the snap count. Again, just launch that one. You have to have a very stiff hand or stiff wrist, one or the other. If you do both, it lifts the ball way up over. And that was, he'd had to have a pogo stick to get that one. That's way back there. 19-yard loss, and Brad Nortman, who hasn't had to pump much this year because of the success of the Wisconsin offense and a high kick. Hawthorne had a chance to catch it at the 30, and instead, he's going to lose about 25-plus yards as it carries over his head and inside the five. A special team snafu again for Illinois, their second of the game. It's a 74-yard Nortman punt. Yeah, well, what a change of field position. You get the snap over the head, you think you're going to get good field position, but you're punting with the win, misjudged the football. Now you're down inside your five, starting at your three-yard line. Coach Zook is going, why me? <laughs> he's, he's saying, there's a black cloud right now yeah. above my head. Back inside their own five-yard line, and Shieldhouse returns at quarterback. Ford gets out across the five, and a good push close to the eight-yard line. Second and about five. Five and counting to go here in the third quarter at Illinois. Donovan Young had a couple of touchdown runs in the first half, and he's cut down. Third down coming up. Let's take a look at today's Dave and Buster's playbook. And really what it is about is matchups. We get the motion guy coming. They're going to attack that right side to put an extra man over there. Illinois is not fast enough or come down enough to get a guy in there. Easy job of making the fourth down. Another opportunity, same thing. Same exact play type thing. Pull the extra lineman. Get the extra guy at the point of attack. Illinois has to step up. Have somebody fill those gaps. They go two for two on fourth downs in that drive to score and make it a three-point game. Now the defense trying to get them the ball right back. Shieldhouse, third and six, looking for Jenkins. Oh. A little hot and through his hands. Throwing into the wind, you tend to overstride, overthrow the ball because you feel the wind, and it'll move it. When you throw it laterally, it's going to push it up and away. Receivers have to be ready for that. It's like a, a knuckleball or something like that. You on a win, Again, the windy day, it's as much on the receivers to catch the ball and track it as is a quarterback. And it's a new punter for Illinois, Justin Duvernois, who dropped a snap on a punt earlier, gives way here to Ryan Langford, who is there wide receiver and backup punter and he will rugby it out of the end zone and favorable conditions coming up for the wisconsin offense in illinois territory here's wendy nix beth thank you very much we go back out to ann arbor michigan hosting nebraska 17 10 ball game denard robinson here with a one yard touchdown run his second rushing touchdown of the day 14th of the season and also a score michigan stayed up big 48-3 over Indiana. Well, Wendy, Michigan stayed in good position to wrap up a share of the Legends division, but a much different story in the Leaders division. After the first Illinois three and out, it's Wisconsin ball from the Illini 44. Wilson incomplete intended for Aberderis. You know, this is an interesting game because Illinois has lost the momentum, but the reality is they're still ahead. They're three points in. I think if you ask anybody, would we take a three-point lead at the end of the third quarter, they would have said absolutely. So if they can regain some momentum here, and this is an interesting field position because Wisconsin has the wind with them, but they're only going to have it for another minute and 15 seconds. Wilson to Monty Ball, another big burst up the middle, inside the 35, close to another first down. Here's what's coming up this afternoon, more college football for you, including uh, some one-loss teams 
Oklahoma, Oregon coming up later tonight, and number one LSU also taking on Ole Miss. And Oklahoma probably not very happy, in all honesty, that Oklahoma State lost last night because that's going to diminish the value of yeah. that game for them. What a terrific atmosphere that was in Ames. And Monty Ball now right at 100 yards rushing today on 25 carries. Ball back to work into the second area. After a 34-yard run. What happens is this Wisconsin offensive line wears you down. There's big guys. They're doubling. They're leaning on you all game long. And the Illinois defense right now is getting tired. They're not able to get off those blocks at the line of scrimmage to stop the big gashing gains. The perseverance of Monty Ball, who 13 months ago was the third stringer. Paul Chris said he put in the work every day, every week in the offseason to get better. They'll fake it to Ball. Wilson on the boot. Touchdown, Wisconsin. And they've got their first lead of the day. They did it. <laughs> to, to end the half, or end, excuse me, end the quarter. They had the win. They want to score while well. they had the win. They made it happen. Monty Ball is one of the better decoys you'll find in college football. And Russell Wilson with the, the footwork to get into the end zone. You get all those guys moving one direction. Your body, you've got to go with them. You've got to keep your head in the crack. But you still have to set that edge for the defense. Wisconsin stymied in the first half. But they come back strong in the third quarter to grab the lead. set to start the fourth and uh, plenty to cheer about right now for Wisconsin as they have their first lead of the day. I think that one young man had spotted cow disease though. I'm not <laughs> sure. Trailing in this game in the first half 14 to nothing uh, but uh, Monty Ball and Russell Wilson leading the comeback. Monty with 134 yards rushing. He is the top runner in the Big Ten Conference. They've benefited from some penalties and non-penalties, if you will, and also from a couple of miscues on special teams. Botched punt in terms of handling the snap. Misjudged punt in terms of letting it go down inside. And then uh, just too much Monty Ball. You can't keep him down forever. He's too good a back behind too good an offensive line. Illinois with 15 minutes to muster the upset. Now let's check in with Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you. We check again on Furman and Florida. The Gators here trying to play their way back into this ball game. John Brantley to Andre DuBose, a career long 80 yard connection for DuBose. Bulls Florida close, but they would fail the two point conversion. So it's 22 20 late in the second quarter. Well, Wendy here in Champaign, we're starting the fourth quarter, and Illinois is going back to Riley O'Toole at quarterback. And the handoff to the receiver, A.J. Jenkins, and it's a fumble. Illinois able to jump on it. But interesting move here to switch back and forth between Shieldhouse and O'Toole at quarterback. I think they like what they both have done. O'Toole, as it, even though through the interception, uh, his last series, in there, they must feel good that he can do what they want to do. They may have to throw the ball a bit more. Now they're with the wind, which would be better in terms of throwing the football. O'Toole looking for John Davis. He's been a favorite target of his today and busted up by Chris Borland. O'Toole's delivery is still much slower than Shieldhouse. It's allowing the defenders to break on the ball, either get their hands on it or potential interceptions. He's going to have to speed up that release. Probably that will happen as he plays more. Now it's the Wisconsin fans raising a little cane on the road. Not a lot of them over there, but they're pretty vocal. 
A.J. Jenkins, by the way, today, 13 yards rushing, 33 yards receiving. Well below his average in a third down for O'Toole. And nearly picked off, popped around, and now it is intercepted by Aaron Henry on the rebound. Third turnover of the day for Illinois. Fenelis had a hand on it, Jenkins had his tips on it, and it ends up in Henry's arms. Honestly, not sure where he was throwing this ball. There's a couple receivers in the area. You see the safety sort of lurking there. They both got underplayed by the defenders who initially tipped the ball to start with. Jenkins almost stole it back. He kept it going. Henry, finally the recipient of it, standing there playing shortstop. You see it from this angle. Should have been an interception initially by Fenelis. And just great job. That's the tip drill that you practice every day as a DB. They don't usually throw you the ball, but if you get a chance to tip it up, keep it alive, and then finally get your mitts on it. The first three games for the Wisconsin defense, they only forced one turnover. In their last seven and a half games, now 16 takeaways for the defense, and ball is wrapped up and thrown for a six-yard loss. Stick around for more college football this afternoon. Number one LSU in action against Ole Miss later tonight, as is the number four team in the country, the Oregon Ducks taking on USC. And an adjustment up front for Wisconsin. Travis Frederick, the left guard, has moved over to center to replace Ryan Groy, who was making his first start today for the injured Peter Kahn's. Monty Ball, left side, into the secondary, and he steps out of bounds at the 23-yard line, first down. One of the things in the first half is Illinois controlled the ball, controlled time on the clock, run the, ran the football. They have not been able to control the ball in the second half, and the defense is starting to get tired. You see not just the same kind of effort of getting off the blocks or maintaining leverage. They're losing it. Monty Ball is getting stronger as this game goes on. Monty Ball continues to rack up the yardage. They were held to just 52 yards rushing in the first half as a team. Close to 100 already in the second half. Wilson to the air, Nick Tune. Inside the 20 to the 17, Justin Green with the tackle. That's another example of an option for the quarterback. That's a running play to his left. He surveys the field. If he sees single coverage or off coverage on his receiver, he's going to just step and throw the ball. He was lucky because the pulling guard almost ran into him on that play. But that's the athleticism of Russell Wilson to pull that off. Fifth catch for Toon. Jared Aberderis, by the way, without a reception so far today. Aberderis, the motion man. He got some help from the guys up front, but the spin move is all him. Signature. You can see, too, as he comes at you, just watch his head, eyes and head. He sees that, breaks a the tackle there. Whoa, spin move on that one. Then it's acceleration to get in the end zone. He got a great crack back block from Aberderis, who has a sore shoulder, but didn't look like it on that play. A 10-point Wisconsin lead, and a pair of losses may have hampered his Heisman Trophy aspirations, but perhaps it's time to get him back on the list. Three more touchdowns today for Moneyball. ESPN College Football is streaming live on your computer, tablet, or smartphone via WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. We'll have the Watch ESPN app out uh, and uh, ready to go up in the airport later today. But uh, we've still got 12-12 to go here in the fourth quarter and a big second half for Wisconsin, trailing by two touchdowns in the first half and their Big Ten championship dreams in serious jeopardy. But they have bounced back nicely here and they're up 28-17. 
Lonnie Ball with three more touchdowns on the resume. Well, I'm going to guess that Shieldhouse is going to be back in the game. Trying to dive on the ball after uh, the muff. Let's check in right now with Wendy. Beth, thank you very much. We go back to Greenville, South Carolina, where Furman is hosting Florida. John Brantley, actually this is in Florida. Quentin Dunbar, 29 yards. Florida playing from behind all afternoon. 27-22 though, their first lead. Well, the Gators making the comeback and uh, Wisconsin making the comeback here today. And now Nathan Shieldhouse back at quarterback for Illinois. They have not scored here in the second half. Shieldhouse. Chris Borland bearing down on him, throws him for a loss and a flag on the other side of the field. Borland, nice job staying outside from his inside linebacker position. Scraped to the outside and did a great job because Shieldhouse is tough in the open field. Holding, offense, number 71, 10 yard penalty, repeat, first down. After scoring 17 in the first half, a totally different story in the second half for Ron Zook's offense. 12 plays, three giveaways. They put themselves in the hole right here, first and 20. Donovan Young spinning out across the 15, close to the 20. He's second down and long. Young slow to get up. A true freshman from Texas. Holding his left leg off the ground, his left ankle and foot. I don't know if that's any indication of what the injury is. They can ill afford. He's he's starting to come on. He's got some more, probably the most explosiveness of all of their running backs. He scored their two first half touchdowns. Uh, Took a good shot from yeah, Aaron Henry yeah. on the tackle. Looks like his foot might have been planted as he got hit on the knee. We're gonna take a time out here as Young gets some attention and a 28-17 Wisconsin lead. Running back Donovan Young injured on that last play, uh, getting tended to on the Illinois sideline. Starter Jason Ford is back in on second and 12. Open is John Davis across the middle. They had a first down out to the 37 yard line. And it looks as if they're going to go back to the NASCAR full speed, no huddle. And they need to. They're down two scores, 11 points, which means if they do score, they probably will go for two. Shieldhouse now 12 of 14, 83 yards through the air. Ford out of the backfield with the catch to the 42. That'll set up a second and five. Being pretty secretive on the sideline no about injuries. Shieldhouse gonna keep it and slam to the turf by Mike Taylor, the leading tackler in the Big Ten Conference. When you run the quarterback sweep, the problem with it is there's no subterfuge, there's no misdirection. It's a full speed look for the defense, so they start to flow that way too. You've got to create some type of a counter play off of it or counter move first before you run quarterback sweep. Third and six. Shieldhouse going to run for it. And then the pitch as he's going down shuttles the pass to Ford at the 45. And that will be short by a couple of yards. I don't think he knew where he was on the field. He could have fallen forward for the first down. Thought he needed maybe more. Tried to make the move and, and lost it. Now it's a tough decision. Fourth and one. Here we go. Maybe it's not that tough. When you're down in the fourth quarter, let's go for it. 
And when you've lost four games, you got to change your fortune somehow. Let's do it right now. 12 tackles for Taylor, and it's fourth and one. Do it quick. Wisconsin running guys in late, and they're going to have to call a timeout. Wisconsin calls timeout. 9.22 to go. Illinois in a fourth down play when we come back. ESPN's College Football is presented by Five Hour Energy. The no way, no hassle way to a great morning. Visit fivehourenergy.com and in part by Taco Bell. Think outside the bud. Wisconsin outscoring Illinois 21 to nothing in the second half. All three touchdowns set up by turnovers and now fourth and one for Illinois to keep the drive alive and it appears that Shieldhouse will have enough. No question about that one. That got great line surge from the offensive line up front and push from the backs in the back. They just ran up and put their hands on the line and pushed forward. Got them all moving in the right direction. Illinois trying to end a four-game losing streak after they started out the year 6-0. Donovan Young, back up tailback, trying to shake off the injury on the sideline. All kinds of movement. The pitch will go to Langford, taken down at midfield. And a good running tackle made by Aaron Henry. Great job, by because that play... Everybody else was blocked on that side of the field. That had a chance to be a big-time play. Aaron Henry knifes through, shoestring tackle right there, just dives and trips him up. Great job. Short pickup, second and eight. Shieldhouse with time. And the catch made by Evan Wilson inside the 45. It'll be third. And a couple. And this, if the other was four down territory, obviously we're in it again here. Quick tempo. Shieldhouse keeps. Second effort has the first down. Shieldhouse still on his feet inside the 30 yard line. Tackled by Mike Taylor. The up-tempo stuff has been the best thing that Illinois has done today. They've got to continue it. They started the game this way. They're going to be in it for the rest of the quarter if they can score here. 15 yards for Shieldhouse. First and 10. To Langford. Couldn't hang on. Incomplete on the forward pass. They've played with a couple of QBs today, Shieldhouse and Riley O'Toole, and their numbers. The only difference is that inner, that that thing right there. That hurts a lot because they both are pretty accurate, but O'Toole threw it to the wrong team a couple times. Resulting in a couple of scores for Illinois, or for uh, Wisconsin, rather. safety read his eyes the entire time he was looking at that inside post seam the off safety who never saw uh, Shieldhouse never saw him he picked that off just read his eyes the entire way watch Shieldhouse he's looking that way the entire time right now focus stare down that thing and two players but especially that off safety who had nothing to worry about he was just going to cover that middle area great diving catch Wisconsin's defense continues to make plays in a 28-17 lead. Twenty-eight to seventeen, Wisconsin has uh, scored off of three previous turnovers, and now they get a fourth. And that uh, ground churning, clock chewing offense is back on the field. And another carry for Monty Ball approaching 170 yards on the day. And these turnovers, again, botched punt right here. Sets Wisconsin up at the one-yard line. And you get the uh, fumble on the pass that would have been a first down. 
The pass into the wind, got knocked down, and all these have resulted in touchdowns, by the way. And then one thrown into the crowd, tipped around, tipped roll. Wisconsin comes up with it. And here is the final interception just a moment ago by Shelton Johnson. Second down and five as Wisconsin will try and run this one out and set up a date with Penn State next weekend. Mono a mano in Madison for uh, the division championship in the leaders division and a spot in the Big Ten championship. You should make a t-shirt. I'm getting t-shirts ready for mono that. Mono a mano yes. in Madison. <laughs> it is tough to overcome that many self-inflicted wounds. Four turnovers and two miscues on special teams have really hurt Illinois today. Even if Penn State beats Ohio State today, it would still come down to next weekend and the head-to-head -head against Wisconsin and Penn State for the tie break to get to Indianapolis and a date with uh, what more and more is looking like Michigan State on December 3rd. Uh, State winning handily today and Michigan State would just need a win at Northwestern next weekend to sew it up. Interesting today, too, we haven't seen much of James White. Monty Ball, obviously, this game is still close, it? but normally I thought we would have seen more of James White. Uh, but Monty Ball carrying the rock. There's probably no one better in college football. Monty now 32 rushes, 192 yards, and becoming the fifth guy in NCAA history with 30 touchdowns on a season. Terry Hawthorne with the tackle. In fact, if the scores stand today with Michigan State winning and Michigan winning, that would put the Spartans in the Big Ten championship game because even if they lost next week, they would have the tiebreaker uh, thanks to their win over the Wolverines. And they don't want to back into it, but you take it any way you can mm -hmm. <laughs> to be in the championship game. The inaugural Big 12 championship. Big 10, excuse me. <laughs> the 12 team Big 10 inaugural championship game. Uh, third down and six. And back to the uh, continually evolving Monty Ball story and the tremendous season he's having for Wisconsin as Nick Toon looks like he's going to get the first down yardage with his sixth catch of the day. But uh, Monty with the uh, uh, receiving touchdown and two more rushing touchdown gets him to 30 on the year chasing Barry Sanders and three more games plus who knows what's going to happen right the rest of this game. He got a chance based on how explosive he is and this offense and the way they utilize him not just as a runner but as a receiver out of the backfield. That uh, third game of course would be if they qualify for the Big Ten Championship. They've got Penn State next week and a bowl game down the road. They'd love to make it roses if they could. But uh, Monty Ball, he had four rushing touchdowns against Nebraska, three running touchdowns in three other games. He's got three more scores today. With Oklahoma State's loss, uh, look at all the one-loss teams, but it appears that uh, the average would uh, favor Alabama as the team that would get through the BCS standings brought to you by Vizio. You know, that's why it's college football. You can't mail them in. you got to play the games. That's so, so much fun and so exciting to watch at the end of the season. First half, just one trip into the red zone. They did score a touchdown on that, but a much different story here in the second half. They turned the ball over. They didn't have the ball that much because Illinois did a great job offensively of keeping the ball Time away out. from them. Illinois, their second. And certainly uh, some credit too to the Wisconsin defense for standing up. They have held Illinois Please scoreless. Reset the game clock to 3:14. 314. Scoreless here in the second half and uh, the second turnovers timeout. as well. You know, one of the things you'd normally do is try to rip and strip this ball. The trouble with doing that with Monty Ball, you have enough trouble just tackling him. You've got to really forcefully tackle him with both hands and hope that you can get somebody else there just to get him to the ground. So right now the first concern is can we tackle him? Let's tackle him. 
and try to get him out of bounds or stop it. But then the second, third guys definitely are trying to rip and strip. And I'm sure the coaches for Illinois on the sideline are, are reminding everybody, hey, we got to get the ball back, guys. He, we need a turnover. We need a takeaway. He did have the first running back fumble of the season earlier, but they did not lose it. Homestead Miami is the final stop, the Ford 400. As the NASCAR season winds down, the Sprint Cup finale. NASCAR Countdown presented by Napa tomorrow at 2 Eastern. We'll get our coverage underway on ESPN. Will it be Carl Edwards or Tony Stewart? Those are the only two guys left in the chase. Third and five, Wisconsin. And to run out the rest of the clock. The fake to Brady Ewing and then the throw to Aberderis for his first catch. Brady's not used to selling the fake because he does not have a carry yet this season. I don't think anybody was fooled by that play action. No, that really is a fake. When they <laughs> fake to him, we know it's a fake. But I'll tell you, that was a great throw into the wind by Russell Wilson. He's having no issues. His arm strength allows him to throw with the wind or into the wind with impunity. We've talked a lot about Monty Ball today, of course, uh, Russell Wilson continues to go about his business. He's a uh, 10 for 13 with a touchdown. What's that, just uh, four incompletions in his last two games as Ball inside the 20-yard line. And a, flag on and a flag on the play back at the line of scrimmage. That laundry looked like holding to me and it's probably gonna come back. Holding, offense, number 70. 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. That's on Kevin Zeitler. I thought it was interesting uh, to hear uh, the Wisconsin coaches talk about their targeting, what they target. They want to get right on bodies. They don't want to hit the edges. They want to be face-to-face. -face. And so a lot of times when you get that way, you can hold a lot easier. They don't worry about leverage. They want to knock them back off the ball. It's a different philosophy, and they've got the big enough guys to do that. They can cover up your guys. There's the offensive coordinator, Paul Christ, up there in the coach's box. That could be the one question moving forward for Wisconsin is uh, the viability of their offensive line as ball is tackled by Merciless. They started out with Ryan Roy at center because Peter Kahn's is out with an ankle injury, probably for an extended period. But midway through the game, they shifted Roy over to left guard and Travis Frederick over to the center spot. Well, there were two straight errant snaps, one that caused the penalty, the other went way, way over Russell Wilson's head. And that, when that happens, a coach, you're going, uh oh, wait a second, time out. We can't allow that to happen again. That's too dangerous a play. Let's change personnel. Ronnie Ball, his season high, 223 yards against Purdue this year. He's threatening that this afternoon. And Inside the 20-yard line for Monty Ball. The first down, tackled by Tavon Wilson. He's over 200 yards for the day. This has been a valiant effort by the Illinois defense. It has really played pretty well the entire season, but they're getting worn down now. Their offense has not supported them in this half. They've been on the field the majority of the time, and they've had to stand up or try to withstand the onslaught of the Wisconsin running game. <laughs> Look at that. 220 yards rushing, 18 points. He may not be done yet. Under a minute. And actually, uh, if Wisconsin chooses, do they go for style points and another score, or do they uh, put on the brakes here in the final minute? I'm going to guess they just keep running the ball. They don't worry about whether they score or not. They just do not want to give the ball up. 160 yards in uh, the second half alone for Monty Ball, and there's the headset coming off, and a whew, sigh of relief for Brett Bielema. It was a little dicey in the first half, but Wisconsin will have a date with Penn State for the leaders' division and a berth in the Big Ten championship game on December 3rd. They outscore. 21 to nothing in the second half and they get the road win and they hand the fighting Illini a fifth consecutive defeat after their 6-0 start. 28-17 the final today in Champaign. Coming up next it's college football scoreboard presented by Acura. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in
Southern Sports. For Mike Bellotti and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Beth Mullins. So long from Champagne and another big afternoon for Monty Ball and the Badgers.